In this lesson, we're going to go over measures of central tendency. And what that means is how are we going to denote the middle of a data set or the center of a set of data? Now, let's say we have the following data set. We have two, two, three, four, five, five, six, and 15. So this is our data set. And we are trying to figure out different ways that we can describe the center of this data set. So the first way that we can look at this is using the arithmetic mean or the mean is going to basically be the average of that data set. So we're going to take each of these values, we're going to add them together, and we're going to divide that by the number of values that we have. So our mean, which is often denoted by an x with a bar on it, is going to be equal to the sum of our data set divided by the number of values in that data set. So in this case, we are going to take 2 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 plus 5 plus 6 plus 15. That is each of our values. So this is the sum of our data set. So that is what is denoted by here. And now we're going to divide that by the number of values we have in our set, which is what is meant by this 1 over n here. So in this case, that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So we're going to divide this by 8. So if we add that all together, we're going to get 42. That is 2 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 plus 5 plus 6 plus 15. And that is going to be divided by 8, which can be simplified to 21 over 4, which is 5 and 1 quarter, or 5.25. So the arithmetic mean of this data set is 5.25. So that does make sense when we look at this data set here. We can see that that is generally where a lot of these numbers are, are clustering towards. It is obviously shifted a little bit to the right, and that is because this value over here, 15, is quite a bit higher than all of the other values that we have here. So that is kind of what's pulling our arithmetic mean more to the right. Okay, so that is the mean. Then we have our median. That is another way that we can describe the central tendency of a data set. And so the median is basically like the middle number in our data set. So what we have to do when we are calculating a median is we need to order our data set from low to high. And we already have our data set here ordered from low to high. But if we were given this data um, like 5, 4, 6, 5, 15, 2, 3, 2, we would need to reorder that data so that it is going from lowest to highest in order. So once we have ordered that data set, then we are going to calculate what our middle position is. And the way that we can do that is we can calculate that by n plus 1 divided by 2. This is going to give us our middle position. This is basically the number of values we have plus 1 divided by 2. In this case, we have 8 values, and 8 plus 1 is 9 over 2, which is equal to 4.5. So we can see here that this is not a whole number. And the reason is because since we have an even number of numbers in this data set, we don't have a true middle within this data set. Our middle is actually two numbers. Because if we look at this data set, this number and this number, those are going to be our two middle numbers. We have three numbers on either side of these two numbers. If we only looked at five, then we would have four numbers on this side and three on this side. And if we only looked at four, we would have three on this side and four on this side. So when it comes to this data set and any even number of values in a data set, we are going to have two numbers that will be in the middle positions. And in this case, we actually take the arithmetic mean of these two numbers to actually find the median. 
So when we do this n plus 1 over 2, that tells us the middle position. So we know with this, our middle position is between the fourth and fifth number. And our fourth number is this 4, and this is our fifth number. So our middle position is going to be in between these two numbers. In this case, it actually turns out that that is going to be 4.5, because 4 plus 5 divided by 2 is equal to 4.5. So that was just a coincidence that the middle position was also equal to the arithmetic mean of these two middle numbers. But in this case, that is our median for this data set. Now, just to make this even more clear, let's say we had a slightly modified data set where we did not have this 15. So our new data set was 2, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5, and 6. So this is just this data set here without the 15. Now we have an odd number of values in our data set. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 numbers in our data set. So if we were to try and find the median position, that would be n plus 1 divided by 2, which is 7 plus 1 divided by 2, which is equal to 4. And that would mean that our middle position is the fourth number. The fourth position is our middle position. So 1, 2, 3, 4. This is going to be our median. So one thing that you need to remember is when you're doing this n plus 1 divided by 2 calculation, that is only going to tell you the position of your median. That does not tell you your actual median. So this was actually a bad example because it turned out that our middle position was also equal to our median. But that is not necessarily always going to be the case. This n plus 1 divided by 2 only gives us your middle position. And you need to then count to that position to actually get your median number. And again, just because of this data set in particular, the calculation for n plus 1 divided by 2 ended up being the same as the median, but that is not always going to be the case. If we had just a different set of numbers, it would not be the case. So that is just something to remember. And you're not always going to need to even do this n plus 1 divided by 2 calculation. If you have a set like this where you only have seven numbers, it's pretty easy for you to find that middle number. You can just visualize to see which number has an equal number of numbers below and above it, and you would immediately know that this four is our middle number. But if we had a very, very large data set, then it would be easier for us to just do this calculation so we know the position of our median, and then we can go and count this number of values and find our median number. So now let's go over our last measure of central tendency, and that is the mode. Now the mode is simply going to be the most frequent number. So the number that occurs the most is the mode. So in our data set, we had 2, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5, 6, and 15. That was our data set from before. And to calculate the mode, we just need to see which of these numbers occurs most frequently. And you can have more than one mode, and that is the case in this example. We can see that in this case, 2 occurs twice, 3 occurs once, 4 occurs once, 5 occurs twice, 6 occurs once, and 15 occurs once. So 2 and 5 are our modes. We have a bimodal data set here, and it is 2 and 5. Those are our two modes. If we did not have this 5, then our mode would just be 2. 2 was our mode in that case. And if we had only one 5 and only one 2, then this data set would have no mode. We can see that if we didn't have this 2 and didn't have this 5, each of these numbers would only occur once and this data set would have no mode. So you can have a data set with no modes, it can have multiple modes, it can have one mode or two modes, so it just depends on your data set and which number or numbers are occurring most frequently. So those are your three methods to describe the central tendency of a data set. 
we had our mean, which was 5.25. We had our median, which was 4.5. And we had our mode or modes, which in this case were 2 and 5. And I'll put the data set that we calculated these from next to us here so we can actually see how these different measures are going to describe different aspects of this data. So we have 2, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5, 6, and 15. That was our data set. So we can see here that with our mean, our mean was higher than our median and was higher than both of our modes. And the reason that that is so is because of this 15 here, which is um, basically just pulling that mean up. So the mean is going to be quite sensitive to outliers. Any time that you are calculating the mean, the arithmetic mean of a data set, it is going to be sensitive to any outliers in the data. And outliers are going to be those values that are not typical to the rest of your data set. They're either much higher or much lower than the rest of the numbers in your data set. And so because the mean is going to add all of these numbers together and then divide that by the number of values you have, that is going to be swayed significantly by numbers that are very high or very low in your data set. And so while the mean is going to take into account all of the values in your data set, it is going to be quite influenced by outliers that you might have. The median, on the other hand, is not influenced by outliers. The median, you can see, the median is actually telling us what the middle values are in our data set. And that is to say that exactly half of the numbers in our data set will be higher than the median, and half of the numbers in our data set will be lower than the median. So the median also gives us an understanding of what the center of that data is, but that's not going to give us much information on what is at the top and bottom end of that data set. It's just going to tell us what is the center and that half the numbers will be higher than that and half the numbers will be lower than that. The mode tells us the numbers that are occurring most frequently. So again, that's not really going to be very sensitive to outliers. So which measure of central tendency you use is going to depend on your data set. For example, let's say we were trying to figure out the average grade for a test in a class. If we take the mean, we are going to get a value that is going to be heavily influenced by, um, let's say, those few students who are scoring 100% on the test, and we have a few students who are scoring, let's say, 30 or 40% on the test. The mean is going to be quite influenced by those and might not give us a very good idea of what the typical student is actually scoring in that class. The median is going to basically tell us the value at which half of our students are scoring higher and half of our students are scoring lower. Now the mode is going to tell us the grade that was most frequently achieved in that class. So while each of these three measures of central tendency are valid, each of these three are going to give you a good idea of what is actually the center of this data set. The measure that you use is very much going to depend on the specific data set that you have in mind and how you would like to represent that data set. So you can pick and choose which one you are going to be using and which one makes the most sense for describing your data accurately.